Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I just wanted to share with you a very quick shot breakdown for this scene right here. Now obviously the siren head figure in the end was digital, but something that I have not shared yet about this shot is that actually the whole clip from the back of the car at the end was a digital shot. This took me about a day to put together and I'm super proud of it, and so I just wanted to share how I threw it together. So as you can see here, this is the scene. We've got kind of this crazy matte painting thing going on here of the background, and this is just a picture I took of my yard with a long exposure, so it's at night, it took about 12 seconds of exposure, and it's kind of in focus, which is nice. And this here is just some headlights for my car, so that's how I use to light the scene. There's a little bit of weird stuff going on along the ground here, and that's just where I painted out some stuff with the clone tool in GIMP. And then you can see here, there's just a super basic, basically a cube, kind of to block out the barn and have something for the siren head figure here to hide behind and if we render it you can kind of see what's going on here super super basic stuff but once you go like this kind of hides it a little bit makes it a little bit creepier and you can see here i've got a couple of spotlights pointing towards that and that just lights it pretty well this everything here is just a emission shader and it's got that texture pasted right on it so that's the background let's talk about my favorite part, which is the foreground, if we look up here in the car, I actually took some long exposure pictures of the inside of my car at night. And if you look here in material preview, this is actually a reconstructed car. <laughs> I just took the dashboard and just kind of extended it into 3D geometry. It's fairly basic. And then I just projected that texture right on top of this model here. And as you can see, I've kind of got my own collection for all the glass because I did that separately with its own shader. If we check that, you can see the glass popping in there. And if we go into camera view, um, we've got all sorts of defocusing effects going on, but you can kind of see how the glass is looking. And also, these chairs weren't in the picture. I had those cranked all the way back so that all I could see was the dashboard. And so I put these chairs in digitally. They've got some pretty basic texture on them. I've also got this little light up here in the top, which is like the dome light, so that lights the chairs pretty nicely, and it's pretty consistent with the rest of the texture. Now if we wanted to look at this glass shader here on the front, that's something I'm pretty proud of. If we go into the shading tab and just take a look at this, it's actually pretty simple if you break it down. We've got a transparent shader and a principled shader, and they're both going into a mixed shader, and that's just going to the material output. The only thing that's kind of complex is for the normal, I've just got a Musgrave texture, just this basic thing going into a super low bump node, and that just influences the normal a little bit, so it's a little bit of wavy glass. And then for the roughness of the principal shader, I have this kind of splattered texture, and I've got the contrast ramped up a little bit, and then adding to that I have this fairly basic texture that I just painted in Krita, and with this I just upped the contrast a little bit, inverted it, and added it to the splatter texture. So I think the way this goes into the principal shader is the white parts are smoother, and then the darker parts are a little bit more rough, so it's kind of like splattered mud or something, and then the windshield area where the windshield wipers hit are a little bit whiter, so they're a little bit less rough. And this principal shader, if you take a look at it, the specular is super high, the roughness is controlled by this factor. I think it's pretty low roughness, so it's fairly reflective. And that's pretty much all I did to that principal shader. And then if you just throw it in with the transparent shader, it's actually at a factor of about 0.69. So it's mostly the principled, but some transparent, so we can actually see through it. 
and I found this shader actually really helps to kind of sell the effect, and it kind of covers up the monster a little bit more, so it just adds a little bit more to that spookiness and unsurety of what we're exactly looking at. So that's the glass shader and most of the car. One thing that I'm also pretty proud of is I actually threw in a couple of green screen elements, and if we go back into material preview, here's me just kind of hopping into the driver's seat. The way I rigged up the camera view, you can't really see it super well, but you can kind of see that somebody's there, which is what I was going for. And the other thing that you might notice in the final shot is if we go into rendered view, you can actually see the reflection of me in this rear view mirror here. And since this green screen element is just a texture of the back of me, even if you look at the front of it, it's just going to be the back of my head. So what I did was I actually captured another green screen element, and that's of the front of me. And actually behind the camera here, we've got another one of the seats duplicated, and then we just have this long exposure of the back of my car. And what I did was I set it so that this rear view mirror was, instead of reflecting this here, I have it aimed so that it's reflecting this here. And when we go into camera view and render that, you can just see that What's going on behind the camera is what's reflected here. So that was kind of a fun workaround to the problem of, well, how do we get a 3D character in the scene here? We don't need to. We just have two two-dimensional characters, which was kind of fun. One more thing that I kind of attribute to the relative realism of this scene is the camera. And what I'm doing with the camera here is actually, if we just play this back, you can kind of see how it's moving a little bit. If you look in the camera settings, we've got some depth of field enabled, and that's focusing on object empty, which you can see here if you select it. And just throughout the animation, this empty is going all over the place, like a real camera might when it doesn't really know what to focus on. So it's kind of focusing on the windshield, and then back here, and then up at the siren head monster, and that's where it ends. But having some depth of field on your digital camera will really help the realism. And especially if it's going all over the place and things are blurry, that helps to just obscure the fact that it's not a perfectly realistic scene. So for the camera, depth of field is an important thing. We've got the zoom in effect. If you look in our layout tab, you can see we've got some keyframes here on the main camera. And if we look at the solid view, you can kind of see the zoom in effect going on. That's pretty nice. And the way I did that was just to... I mean, it's a pretty basic animation. You just hit I, add in a keyframe, and here actually... I've just duplicated a keyframe in the middle so it holds for a second and then it keeps zooming in and that's just kind of like you zoom in a little bit realize you're not quite zoomed in enough and then just zoom in more and basically what we're doing in CG here is we're pretending we're the camera operator and we're just moving the camera around like they might be doing if they're actually in a back seat and just trying to focus on what's going on. The other keyframes you see here are just some basic location keyframes. We start over here and end up over here and what really sells this camera and this is my big secret here it's going to be in a tutorial on saturday but if we go over to motion tracking i actually took a very basic video and it's just a tripod solve so i'm not moving it around and i've just got some camera motion going on and i've tracked that and i did a tripod solve and what i used this for was if we go back to our scene in layout and we kind of split the view Go to the movie clip editor, just take a look at this clip, and actually make sure we can see it. If you look here, this camera here is doing the exact same movements as this camera here. And we're not using this footage at all, but we're using the camera motion. And we're just grabbing this tracked information, and on our camera, we've got a camera solver constraint. So this camera is moving very realistically because it's actually how a real camera moved. And that will really sell your realism. So that is pretty much it of this just kind of brain dump on this shot that I did. I hope you found it useful, and I hope you found it interesting. Let me know if you'd like more tutorials like this, just real quick, kind of shot breakdown type things. I'm not really teaching much, but I think it might give you some ideas on how to put together shots in your future. I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers! Cheers!